Right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the GD and Son channel. Hope everyone's having a great day. So today is a very special day for me. It marks my one year anniversary of working for myself, being self-employed. So I thought today I'd do a bit of a special video. I'm going to kind of take you back a year ago and sort of tell you how I started the company and how it progressed. Give you a little bit of backstory so you can get to know me a little bit better. Also, I'm going to take you through and show you my current setup for what I use for waste removal and my exterior cleaning. Also going to explain a few things I'd like to get in the future. Um, there's more things we want to expand into doing. Obviously buying better equipment at the minute we're quite basic. Uh, so I'd like to explain what we're going to do in the future. And um, yeah, just go from there. So I hope you all enjoy the video. If you do, please smash the like button. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel for more content. Let's jump into it. Right, so as I said, a year ago I was working full time for a bus company in Maidstone. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I didn't like the job, I actually really enjoyed it uh, in some respects, but like the hours weren't great. I mean, I used to do early's and late's. Um, I used to work four days a week, so you know, they were quite long days, the days I was doing. Um, and some of them consisted of like, you know, starting really early and finishing a little bit early, and some, you know, started late and finished late, some even at midnight. Um, so the hours weren't great for me, however, you know, I did enjoy the job. Uh, the working with the people um, and working around in Maidstone. Um, I decided when I got made furloughed from the bus company that I would uh, make the plunge to try and start my own company. It's always been a dream of mine to work myself, be my own businessman. I've tried many little Del Boy schemes in the past, buying and selling things down marketplaces and stuff like that. Hasn't always worked out for me, I must admit, but it's something that I've always felt passionate about doing. So when I got made furlough from the bus company, I decided that I'd start thinking of a few different ideas to try and set myself up in business. And we had someone come and collect some waste from us. And I thought at the time he may have overcharged me. Um, looking back to it now, he probably charged me about right. But I sort of looked at it and thought, well, you know, if he's getting that sort of money for picking up what he just did, maybe we should do it. We already had the transit. We already had uh, the time on our hands. So why not make the time and effort to look into that sort of business? So I got on the computer, done a little bit of research, found out what I needed, what different licenses I needed, what insurance I might need on the van to cover the carry waste, little bits and pieces like that. Uh, it wasn't actually a lot, so I've done a video in the past about licenses. If it is something you're interested in hearing, please drop it in the comments below and I may make another video in the future. But anyway, we decided to get all the licenses sorted out and we got all the paperwork and away we went. I started by making a Facebook page. Um, that's mainly how I promoted my business back then. So I started a Facebook page, just advertised it locally really, just for anyone on my friends list that needed rubbish taken. Then I started doing a few little different adverts that started getting a little bit of uh, publicity. Also then went to Vistaprint, uh, got some leaflets made up. They're only very basic templates, you know, it's very, very tacky. Um, just literally got a template off of Vistaprint, put my details in, a couple of little pictures, um, and then just started handing them out locally. And we actually had a lot of good press from me, you know, a lot of people were getting in contact with me, uh, saying that they wanted the waste removal service. And then when I actually done the service for them, they were then passing recommendations on to their friends and family who were then contacted me. So it kind of snowballed. Um, and in the sort of first couple of months of actually being in business, um, we was hitting some really, really high targets. Like, um, obviously I was still being paid by the bus company as well at this time. So, you know, it was quite um, a generous income that was coming into the household. So we decided that we would like to go full time doing it. However, you know, it was a bit risky to just take the, you know, the plunge and quit full time employment to go off and chase this dream of being self-employed. So I decided to ask my bus company if I could go part time. However, due to the current climate and the circumstances of the coronavirus, they wasn't actually accepting any part time applications. So I had a difficult decision to make. Right, so me and the wife sat down one night and we went through all the finances and we tried to sort of counter for every penny that we was earning, how much we'd need to survive, all different bits like that. And um, she decided, she said to me, look, you need to go for it. You don't want to look back in 10 years time, 20 years time and say, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. Just go for it. We'll make the best of it. You know, if needs be, we can always go back and get another job. Um, it's one of these jobs you can always walk back into. I've also got a class two uh, lorry license, so you're never really going to be out of work with them sort of licenses. So we decided to make the plunge and uh, we just went for it. So that's pretty much the backstory. Um, a year on from now, we've actually expanded. We've uh, moved into the exterior cleaning, uh, mainly pressure washing driveways and stuff like that. We've also entered like doing gutter clearances and bits and pieces. Exterior house cleans is another thing we're going to look into. Roof cleans are going to be coming up hopefully later on this year into the beginning of next year. Uh, so there's lots of different things we've added um, in the short space of time that we've been running. And we put a lot of investment into the company, um, a lot of capital into it as well, trying to upgrade our equipment. So anyway, I'll get through now and we'll uh, discuss some of the things that we've got. 
So before we jump into uh, looking at my setup and what sort of equipment I've got, I just want to do a big shout out for my boy Sid at Partridge Exterior Cleaning. Um, he's a really nice guy. Um, his channel has, I've been following his channel for about three or four months now, and sort of the last sort of month to month and a half, his channel has just blew up. Uh, and it's great to see the small time YouTuber like myself, um, you know, getting them sort of views and their channel growing so quickly. Uh, it gives me hope that my channel might do something like that in the future. Um, but he's really, really generally a nice bloke. I've actually been chatting to him on Facebook. He was asking for a few bits of advice. I was asking for a few bits of advice. Um, yeah, he's just a really, really down-to-earth guy. He's always replying to comments you put on YouTube videos. If you've got any questions, just ask him. He ain't afraid to answer them. Uh, and his videos do lots and lots of help if you are trying to set up in the exterior cleaning business. So I am going to put a link to his channel in the description below. Please go and show him some love. Tell him your boy Gary sent you over from GD and Son that would be much appreciated. So anyway, let's show you my setup. Right, so as far as waste removal setup goes, I haven't actually got anything with me because I store it in a separate garage. Uh, but it's very, very quite basic. I mean, all you really need is uh, some wheelbarrows, depending on how many people you've got working for you, if you're just a one-man band like myself. I mean, I've got my nephew Bill working for me. He comes on days that I can't do on my own if I've got bigger jobs on or if I've got two or three jobs on the same day, I'll take him. He doesn't work with me every day. It's not a full-time job for him. So if you're just a one-man band, obviously one wheelbarrow, one shovel, uh, ton bags can make life a lot easier. If you've got lots of little bits, you put them all into one bag and carry them out um, so you're not carrying like loads of little bits. Rubble sacks, they're another good one. How many times have carry bags broken or you're picking up waste, food waste, and all the bags have split? And the rubble sacks are really, really robust. Um, they've got quite a thick outer skin. Um, so they're not going to rip very easy. Great for things like garden clearances as well. If you put in, um, you know, your uh, grass cuttings and leaves in there, absolutely great. Dustpan and brush, broom, you know, all little bits and pieces like that. It's very, very basic for a waste removal setup. I mean, you can do it with just your hands. You know, you can just carry things out. So there isn't a lot to it. Um, you'll just find over time you might say, oh, that will come in handy. Even a sack barrow, you know, if you've got a sack barrow and you're trying to move, I mean, we've had things like where people have said, can you take our waste and can you also take the dishwasher? You know, if you're parked a long way away, you know, just having a sack barrow just to wheel that washing machine or that dishwasher out rather than carrying it to people um, will make your life a lot easier. So just little bits and pieces like that. That's all you really need for waste removal. Right, so getting on to the PPE side of it, uh, the four main ones I would suggest are hard hats, high vis, steel toe cap boots, and gloves. Now, you're going to need them, not so much the gloves to go on site, but definitely the other three. If you haven't got them, there aren't a lot of waste sites in the UK that you let you on legally. You have to be wearing all this equipment in order to come on. Now, I've actually been turned away from waste removal places uh, from wearing shorts. So luckily on that day, I did have Bill with me. Um, had everything else on, was wearing shorts. They said, no, you can't get out of the van. So Bill had to get out, unload everything. I just sat there reading the paper, feet up. Um, so yeah, just be be aware that you need to have that correct PPE. Um, optional sort of things, you know, could be like a dust mask, ear defenders, uh, gloves, um, not gloves, sorry, goggles, you know, just to protect your eyes, it can get quite dusty. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for waste removal. There isn't a lot to it. Um, so yeah, that's the setup. So I haven't got it with me. All my stuff is around my mum's house in the garage. Um, I just go around there and collect it on the days when I'm going to need it. Right, so with regards to our exterior cleaning setup, this is what we've got. Um, this is the washer that we've brought. Um, it's actually a Honda GX390 Evolution pressure washer, 21 litres a minute. Um, it's a really, really good engine. Um, it's never let me down so far. All right, I haven't had much use out of it, um, but it's an absolutely great machine. It cost me around about £1,500, I believe. Um, I got this from Lawn and Power. Um, excellent service. They sent it. It's already been tested, uh, ready to go. Had oil in it. All I'd do is just chuck some petrol in there, and away we went. Um, also, to accompany that, I did buy this. Now, I just want to, before we start getting into these, um, I just want to do a big shout out for a company called Spinner Clean. Now, I've, I just want to tell you a little bit of a story with Spinner Clean. This is the reason why I like the company so much. Um, when I first brought my flat surface cleaner, I didn't buy this one. I brought one which was called the Eco Spin 12. Um, basically, I didn't have much money left once I brought the machine, so I brought the cheapest one I could get. Now, after when it turned up, I realised I'd brought the wrong one. It wasn't enough for my uh, pressure washer. It was far too small. Um, so I actually left it, and I forgot about it for a long time. And I actually went outside my warranty for sending it back. Now, I needed to buy this one. This was around about £500 or £400 and pounds, so it wasn't cheap. Now, I rung Spinner Clean up and, and had a chat with the guy there. Um, his name was Mark. Um, I'm not sure what his surname was, but 
he was so helpful. Um, I basically told him what I'd done, what one I'd brought, and he asked what machine I was using. He was very helpful. He said, no, that one you brought is far too small. It's not going to do you any justice. So send the old one back. Now, I did explain it was outside of warranty. Um, I haven't used it, so it's all still boxed up. Um, but I think it had been about 40 days, and I only had 30 days to return. And he said, not a problem, absolutely don't care. It could have been 60 days. If you haven't used it, send it back, and we will get it changed. So that customer service for me was great. Um, it really, really put a, um, a spark in me about using them. When you get customer service like that, it makes you want to keep going back and using their company. So sent back to the EcoSpin 12, and I brought this bad boy. I believe this is a 20-inch. Um, it's twin jet underneath. Uh, I haven't changed any of the nozzles on it. I might change them to fan jet nozzles, but as it is, this machine is brilliant. Um, it just rips through the dirt. Accompanied with a 21 litre machine minute, um, it's just got such a good powerful flow rate. Um, just peels dirt up off the floor. Absolutely brilliant. So also, this lance here came with the machine. All I've done to this, if I've changed this nozzle, I'm actually gonna try and change this whole fit in here to um, a quick release I want to try and get a quick release so I can just you know interchange my nozzles whenever I want to use them um, I actually brought this turbo lance from spinner clean as well uh, this was around about a hundred pound I believe um, it's already pre-fitted so you know I can't I don't know what tip that actually is on there I just brought it as a pre-assembled lance um, once again excellent service this arrived very very quickly um, I've also got another package coming from Spinner Clean, which should be here tomorrow, but I'm not going to explain that just yet. I'm actually going to do an unboxing, uh, do a little bit of a product review as well, and show you the product in action. So I'll show you a bit more about that. Now I'm going to move on to the chemicals. Right, so as far as chemicals go, there's not much to it really. Um, this is what we call sodium hypochloride. You might have heard it called Hypo, SH. Um, it's basically a bleaching agent. Um, which we use to put on the slabs or the patio or the um, block paving, whatever, whatever surface it is really. It removes any sort of lichen, uh, black marks, white marks, any sort of stains you've got on the patio. Um, this will really help to uh, get it all up. Now, my method of applying it is very, very basic. I have a watering can and a measuring jug. So this watering can is 10 litres. So all I'll do is I'll fill the required amount of um, sodium hypochloride into my measuring jug. Um, always a little tip as well is to um, add the chemicals last. So actually fill your watering can up with the water that you want and then put your chemicals in last and then just give it a little shake. Um, I never fill mine to the top of 10 litres. I always sort of go to sort of like nine and a half. Um, and then as you sort of pour it out the sprout, the spout, sorry, it will sort of foam up as you're doing it. Uh, what we do is we add some surfactant into this um, bleach. Now what the surfactant does is it sort of uh, foams up, it helps it stick to the surface of the tile or whatever you're, whatever you're cleaning, it helps to stick to that surface so that it sort of really, really soaks in and sort of penetrates the slab. Um, yeah, you don't need much of that, I, I think it's a few, few 500 mil I think you put into one of these if I'm correct. Uh, it's been a while now since I've done it, but yeah, it's got all the sort of um, different bits and pieces on here of how to use it. You can always just Google it as well. Uh, this comes from a company called Softwash UK. This is where I buy most of my chemicals from. Uh, this one comes from a company called Pure Seal, uh, which are very, very good. Um, I, I really rate this sort of hypo. Um, I haven't used much of it because, as I say, I didn't buy the purchase it not long ago and I haven't really done many driveway cleaning jobs. So um, the more I get to use it, the more I can review it. But so far, absolutely blinding product. I've also brought some uh, stripper. Um, which you can put on sort of like a, a sealed driveway and it'll just take off all the sealant so you can wash it a bit better uh, If you've got any paint or anything like that, you can put the stuff down uh, Once again, haven't actually used that yet, so I can't really comment too much on it I just brought it at the same time because I needed to get I think it was a free delivery if you spent over so much So I decided to buy that extra bit as well um, But yeah, haven't had uh, the, the opportunity to use it yet So yeah, that's pretty much it towards chemicals Obviously just make sure you are wearing a respirator when using the chemicals and goggles and gloves because uh, you don't want to get this in your skin or breathe it in or anything like that so yeah make sure you're wearing the right PPE and that is the chemicals for exterior cleaning right so as far as window cleaning goes um, it's not really a passion of mine I'm not really too interested in window cleaning but I brought this set up to do my own windows and it's always good to have some traditional equipment um, so you can clean the inside of people's windows if they want to uh, I am looking upgrading to a water fed pole system so that if I do get uh, more frequent window cleaning round, it's easier to do. 
and I'll only really offer traditional services for like indoors or you know if people are really really um, mindset on having a traditional window cleaner um, but yeah this setup I brought from the window cleaning warehouse uh, I believe it's an Unger Ego Ego Tech so you get a nice um, squeegee there uh, that's the standard rubber on it you also get this tool belt thing it does come with a belt uh, but let me just tell you they're not made for the uh, bigger guys um, so I've got my own belt which I clip that on to uh, nice t-bar and a scrub on there for getting on the windows obviously the bucket absolutely monster of a bucket as well comes with this which is a telescopic pole which is great for if you're doing over the top of a conservatory or something like that um, this pole will really help it does take a little bit of a, a technique to get used to um, I'm still learning on this bad boy um, but yeah just sort of slots in at the top clicks in there that's locked on ready to go and then you can sort of you know it's all just sort of like quick release stuff take it off put your rubber on and then uh, whip it off so that's pretty much it for the window cleaning side as I said I would like to upgrade to a water fed pole system um, I'm currently looking at buying a pump and a controller uh, battery and stuff like that and doing like a bit of a AE Macintosh DIY system just something that I can have some buckets 25 litre buckets of spotless water pop the hose in just keep doing like that that's all I need for now for me uh, so that is my window cleaning setup right so as far as gutter clearances go um, our equipment is very basic for that uh, it's something that we are looking to upgrade in the future um, so currently this is what we are using it's a 24 foot docker pole um, this came off Amazon I believe it was around about 60 pound don't quote me on that it was a while ago um, we also brought along with that these um, pro gutter attachments um, which just kind of screw onto the end here um, it has got a, a thread on there so you can sort of attach different things what I'm hoping to attach on there in the future is the skyscraper head um, so we can do roof cleaning because it's not necessarily a heavy one don't get me wrong it's not the lightest pole ever um, but you know it is a fairly quite light aluminium pole um, so I'm hoping it might be okay for doing roof scrapes down later on down the line um, when we did buy from Pro Gutter on Amazon um, we got all these different kind of attachments so as you probably know different gutters have different sort of sizes um, if you've got a particularly thin gutter and you can't really get in there that would sort of um, help you scrape it out um, obviously the disadvantage is you do have to go up the ladder um, and clear it out by hand which is not something I really want to do um, it did come with this as well I'm not kind of sure what that is maybe it's a microphone one day I can do a bit of singing um, not really sure moustache um, I imagine it's probably for internal cleaning cobwebs or something but um, very much doubt I'll ever use that unless I'm I don't know back scratching something like that who knows many many applications for this but I probably won't use it for the right thing so yeah one thing we are looking to upgrade to uh, in the very very near future is a gutter vac now I've seen various different companies um, doing these and there are a few companies that I have been talking to um, and just sort of weighing up the pros and cons of their machines um, really really not sure on which one I'm going to go for yet but you know we still got some time uh, probably won't happen for another few months um, obviously still need to buy the machine um, and obviously the price that they are they're really really great machines for especially if you're going over conservatories and stuff like that um, and obviously if you do driveway cleans and you do have uh, problems with drainage they can be great for sucking up the muck um, so they're well worth their, their weight in gold um, but it's putting that initial investment into the business um, as a small company with a family of like you know five or four children well yeah I suppose five including the wife so four children and a wife um, you know it's hard to just take a chunk of money uh, you know every time and just put it in there's so much I want um, with pressure washing you know even the longer hose I'm only using a 10 meter hose on my pressure washer I really want a hose reel um, and a 40 meter hose you know you're looking at the best part of three and a half 400 quid straight away for that you know different attachments uh, the X jet for spraying chemicals you know another couple hundred quid with all your different attachments so you know it's one of these things you just have to kind of progress into you can't unless you've got the money you know saved up and you've got a big chunk of change you can go and buy all this equipment for someone like me i just sort of have to try and bide my time buy what i need i've got the stuff that i need to get me started in the business um and then obviously i won't take on any jobs that i don't feel that i can do uh safely and then hopefully later on down the line we may have a little bit more money in the business and we can upgrade to bit bigger and better things so that really concludes the video everyone so you've seen my 
uh, waste removal or I've told you what I need for my waste removal side of it seen all the different bits we cover on the exterior cleaning um, and that's pretty much a wrap so I just want to say if you did like today's video please smash the like button because it really does help me out and if you're not already please subscribe to the channel because I've got lots more videos coming up in the future and I'd really appreciate your support so anyway take care everyone and I'll see you on the next video